Hello friends, this video on structural organization of animals part 8 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Okay, so with this we completed our discussion on glands. Now we will talk about cell junctions. While we were talking about the epithelial tissue, we told that one very very important thing about epithelial tissue is that they are very closely packed. That is, there is no intercellular space between them because they are, they, they are acting as a boundary and there can be no leakage in the boundary. And to ensure that there are cell junctions which actually connect the cells to each other. So in the epithelial cells are very tightly connected to each other with the help of junctions. So these junctions are called cell junctions. So now we will be discussing about cell junctions in detail because there are many different types of cell junctions again. So what are cell junctions? These are specialized junctions that provide structural and functional links between individual cells. Okay. So structurally as well as functionally. So that, that it basically acts as a bridge between two cells. So we can call it as an intercellular bridge. So cell junction is nothing but an intercellular bridge. There are three types of cell junctions. Type junctions, adhering junction and gap junctions. Now we will talk about each of them one by one. So we will start with tight junctions. Now all these three types of cell junctions are present in the epithelial tissue but they are all present in different location because they serve different purpose. So let us talk about tight junction. Now when I talk about these, so the first thing you might be wondering why is the picture here is of a deer. What is it doing? Just to depict that, when I talk about cell junctions, sometimes you get lost. You are thinking from where the cell junctions came, where are they present. Talk about any living organism like this animal, it is made up of cells. Now, how the cells are connected to each other? Because right now we are still talking about epithelial tissue. We have not come out of epithelial tissue. So epithelial tissues are tightly connected to each other. Some, some tissues maybe which are present on the skin of this animal, they are epithelial tissue. They have to be tightly connected to each other, otherwise there will be leakage and we don't want any leakage. So how are they tightly connected? With the help of cell junctions. Let us suppose these two blue blocks are nothing but two cells. Now what happens? You want these there the, that there should be no leakage between the two cells. Suppose if they are connected like this. What happens? There is a leakage between the two, right? So substances or foreign particles can enter through the through these. So that is why we have cell junctions. So here they will be tightly sealed at the junction so that the junction is tightly fit and no foreign particle can pass through the junction. So that is basically the concept of cell junction. So let us see what is a tight junction. So let us see what are tight junctions. So the, these junctions, the name itself says tight, so they basically seal two adjacent cells. So seal adjacent epithelial cells in a narrow band. So here in this picture you can actually see the presence of tight junctions. Just look at this place. This is where tight junctions are present. So both the walls of the two cells are completely sealed to each other. So that is a tight junction. This prevent passage of water and water soluble substances. So now since it is so very tightly packed that water or anything soluble in water cannot pass through this junction. It is formed by a network of claudines and other pro proteins. Now basically all these junctions whether we talk about tight junction or adhering junction or uh, gap junctions they are all composed of proteins. Right? Now in some junction some type of protein is predominantly present. For example, in tight junction, claudins are the predominant proteins which are present. But along with claudins, some other proteins are also present. So that you can see in this picture. Let us suppose this blue colored sheet which is shown here represent the walls of two different cells. And this green colored area is nothing but the protein complex or the tight junctions which is formed by claudins. 
Now, what are their function? They hold the cells together, obviously. They also provide protection. Protection in the sense that it doesn't allow water leakage or any other foreign particles to get in. So that way it provides protection. Let us look at the next one that is adhering junction. What is it? This cements neighboring cells tightly together. Okay, again, I mean, all these junctions basically does the same thing. They try to connect the two cells together. More basal than tight. So these junctions are more basal when compared to tight junctions. What does that mean when I say more basal? That means it is more towards the base. So when you look at the picture, you can actually, we, in, in the previous slide, we saw that the tight junctions between two cells are present towards the apical surface, towards the upper surface. But these adhering junctions are present towards the basal surface. So right now we are talking about epithelial tissue. So we all know what is the apical surface and what is the basal surface, right? So here, what is it made up of? It is formed of cadherins and catenins. So these are the proteins it is made up of. So cadherins are proteins which are generally red in color and catenins are the yellow colored proteins. So red and yellow. So here you can see these are the two plasma membrane of two cells and this is how here you can see the cadherin proteins here. This is how they join, right? So here this is not basically a tight junction where both are like completely sticking to each other. Instead, there are some proteins which are like, it is forming a junction kind of a thing here, a bridge kind of a thing. So functions of this is to provide rigidity and mechanical strength. The third and the last type of junction is gap junctions. So. What is a gap junction? Let us have a look. These are junctions that provide direct connections between the cells. What kind of connection are we talking about here? So here what happens is a bridge is formed between the two cells such that the cytoplasm of one cell can interact with the cytoplasm of the other cell. So here you can see, let us suppose this is one cell, the lower one is another cell and this is a junction which is formed. So it is like a bridge so that the cytoplasm of this cell can connect to cytoplasm of that cell. So it is basic, it is nothing but trying to connect the cytoplasms together so that the cytoplasms can communicate with each other, right? So this is formed by connections, again, a different type of proteins. Osteocytes, smooth muscles, cardiac muscles, endocrine glands, at all these locations, we can actually find gap junctions. In fact, gap junction also plays a very important role during the delivery of a baby. So what happens during delivery is that at the, as the time of birth approaches, gap junctions between the smooth muscle cells of the uterus, you know, right, how, how the baby will be coming out, baby will be in the uterus for nine months, right? So during delivery, as the time of birth approaches, the, the female will have a lot of pain and the uterus muscles, the smooth muscle cells of the uterus will start contraction and expansion. And because of that contraction, the movement of the baby towards the lower side will happen and finally the baby will come out. Right? So now the gap junctions which are present in the smooth muscles of uterus, they actually enable such powerful contractions to begin. So that is how it plays a very important role during delivery. Some of the functions, they facilitate passage of ions and small molecules between the cells. Like this is very much different from tight junction. In case of tight junctions, they don't even allow water to pass across, right? But in case of gap junctions, they are not those seal tight junctions which doesn't allow any communication between the cells. It allows communication. It even allows ions and small molecules to pass between the cells. So based on the function of each of these type of junctions, they are present in different locations. So wherever we need a lot of protection, security, you no know, foreign particles, we have tight junctions. Wherever we should allow some passage of ions, we give gap junctions. So that is how, that is why they are present in different, different locations. So this was all about the three types of cell junctions. And I think with this, we have completed all our discussion on the first type of tissue that is epithelial tissue. Thank you. 
please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.